Welcome back to Kushka Garage, everyone. I got a fun one for you today. So, we are going to be installing a fast lift pump electric fuel heater on my 2001 LB7 Duramax GMC Sierra Crew Cab Long Bed Dually named Pig, the Alaska Overland Rig. So if you've been keeping up with the channel, you know, here's the fuel heater, you know that I just rebuilt my fuel uh, filter housing that has a fuel, uh, fuel heater in it. And I just installed that and it's been working just fine so far. And I'm gonna take my fuel heating capability to the next level by installing this probe and these electronics directly into the lift pump so that I can get my, get my fuel up to temp during the cold weather and cold weather starts and um yeah this will this will be pretty neat i think so let's go over a couple of reasons why i'm going to install this and why i didn't just stop with uh just reinstalling my um fuel filter housing uh number one is it gets cold in alaska i don't know if you guys know that uh, I live in the, the southeastern part of Alaska, so it doesn't get as cold as other parts. And it's much like maybe some of the weather patterns that you guys experience down south. A couple of weeks ago with the wind chill, it was negative 30. That was pretty damn cold. We had a cold snap for about three, four weeks. My fuel lines on my uh, heater that goes to the monitor the heater in the house froze, and all we had is electric heat. We couldn't get them sons of bitches to thaw out to save our lives and to keep them thawed out. So I need to re-insulate that. That's another, st that's another story. So... Similar things happen like that uh, to your fuel system and your diesel engines, especially if you live in a location where you're still running number two diesel uh, in cold weather, uh, your fuel will eventually gel up if it gets too cold and stays too cold for too long. And that number two diesel has that waxy material in there. I forgot what it's called. Maybe you can drop that down in the, uh, the comment section if you know. It's like poly something, polo something. Anyways, when it gets cold, it's a waxy substance, so it starts to congeal and turn into a solid, and that goes through your filter, clogs it up, no more fuel moves through your filter, and your truck uh, dies. And you don't want to be stuck on the side of the road with a dead truck because your fuel filter got clogged up when you could have just installed one of these on your lift pump. This was about 150 bucks online. You can get them from a number of different places. Um, and... This will plug directly into the lift pump. And if you have a fast lift pump, you'll have actually two spots to plug them in. One by the, uh, one by the, uh, the water separator, which if you're running one, that's where they recommend you put it because that's where the fuel goes in first. So you can heat up that fuel as it's going into your water separator. And ideally that'll keep pushing that hot fuel into your, uh, uh, your fuel filter and it'll still be hot enough to run to your engine and you know, they'll keep that heat up. But if it's, uh, you know, maybe you live further up in Alaska or you live somewhere in the States where it gets like negative 60, you might consider getting another one of these probes and plugging into both of them. And so that's what I'm going to do. Also, the second reason why I'm doing this is I'm hoping that this is going to increase a little bit of fuel efficiency, especially in winter time. Cause when it is, you know, that cold and then I was driving around and I went out camping when it was, we had that wind chill of negative 30. It was super freaking cold and super painful. That is just cold fuel being pulled from the engine through the lift pump and, or sorry, from the tank to the lift pump to the engine. And at the time I didn't have my uh, other fuel heater hooked up. So it was just cold fuel being dumped into the engine, which was cooling it down. And you know how diesel likes to be hot and needs to be hot in order for it to combust. And we get heat uh, out of a few different avenues um, in our diesel engines, in our, in our Duramax engines. One, during the cold start, you get it through your glow plugs. The glow plugs will heat up those uh, the pistons, the piston chambers, and it get nice and hot. And so that's one way to get it. Two, uh, we use these fuel heaters, like the one that comes stock with your LB7 or your other Duramaxes up till, uh, I think they changed it in the LML. But for all the other ones, you know, still be using a, uh, the heating element and the filter housing. And so that's two. Uh, the third way you get heat is through the air intake heater that's plugged right into your, um, or if you have a, a later model, it'd be a grid 
plug right into your uh, Y bridge right before it goes in the manifold. So you got hot air coming through there, you got hot fuel, and then you have um, heat coming from your uh, glow plugs. And that's gonna create a nice hot environment so that when your engine compresses, and that's where the another um, another way you get that heat is through compression, extreme compression, that'll give your, uh, your truck the best chance of starting up in really cold weather. Also, uh, many of your trucks probably already have this. You'll have um, like a, a coolant uh, heater block probe thing. That's just a, um, you know, it's a block heater plugs right into your coolant passage on the side of your engine and will heat up your engine via all those coolant channels. And then for a lot of uh, people in Alaska, like, like myself, I also have an additional heater for the oil so it heats up that oil. As if you think about it, when it's super cold out, your engine's super cold, all that, like especially the run at 1540, if like you don't change your oil over to the 530 or 540, whatever people do, I keep it 1540. If you heat up that oil, it's gonna lower that viscosity instead of just being like thick, ice cold syrup that doesn't like to move and is gonna cause a lot of resistance in your engine crank. On top of having a battery that's cold and has, you're running off those cold cranking amps, not your normal cranking amps. That's why you have the two different ratings because your battery is uh, not fully functioning up to like its optimal capacity when it's that cold. So you have a lot of extra drain on your battery that's uh, already running low because you're running fuel heaters and you're running glow plug modules and you have that extra thick uh, sludge and an ice cold engine. That's, that's just a rep recipe for a no start situation and that's no good, that, that you don't want that. So that's why doing all these different things that I'm doing and the fuel efficiency comes in when uh, you're cruising down the road and it's ice cold and a lot of people will gel up and die on the side of the road when, when they're driving, even though they have been driving and their engine's been hot and it's been sending hot fuel back to the tank and try to recirculate that. Uh, it's so freaking cold and we do have those fuel coolers too that it has to run through, but it's so freaking cold that the um, you're still gelling up and uh, you're still gelling up and you're still clogging up your filters so it's still not moving that fuel like it should. And so having hot fuel and keeping that at optimum temperature, which this will keep it at optimum temperature, it'll, um, it is regulated. Once it reaches the desired temperature, then it will kick off. And same thing with the other one that's uh, in your engine bay. I believe that one kicks on when it detects fuel that is about 59 degrees or below. So these things are automatic. They're not just going to be on all the time. But if your fuel is too cool, it will bring it up to optimal temperature. And that optimal temperature will give you that full combustion, full compression. You'll get full, uh, you'll get full power. If you've ever noticed uh, driving through, like I've noticed driving uh, around using number one diesel. Because we use number one diesel. It doesn't uh, gel up like number two diesel does. But it is uh, less energy efficient. It doesn't have uh, as much um, energy power or quality or whatever the proper terminology is for it. It's a lower grade fuel as far as uh, energy is concerned. And so truck's a little luggy. And when it's a little luggy and your truck still wants to perform at optimal, you know, optimal level, it's going to dump more fuel into your engine to try to make up for that and compensate for it. And so you're really just losing all kinds of power, all kinds of fuel efficiency. And one way to make sure you get all that power and efficiency is to make sure that your fuel is operating at its optimal temperatures. And this will work year round. So even if it's a little cool in summertime in Alaska, which it always is, it rains and snows here constantly and really doesn't get hot for very, very long. Uh, we might get a couple few weeks out of the year and that's it. But otherwise, you know, we're gonna rely on things like this to keep our trucks running nice and smooth. Anyways, I hope that made sense. Um, I think I'm done talking about it now. Let's go ahead and get into this kit. All right, this is the kit. Comes with uh, I have some, some instructions here. Just tells you it's got some dielectric grease that you should use and that is supplied in there. Also, it doesn't necessarily come with an instructional manual, but you can, um, uh, you can scan that, and I guess there's a manual you can download online. Got some registration information. Uh, it has all the wiring that you need, the big old loom here. Uh, comes with a... Oh, that's the fuse. Comes with all the plugins that you need. 
all the wiring that you need. This will go to your battery. Comes with the uh, comes with the probe, and then comes with some adapters. Which I'm not sure we're gonna need all of these, but we'll find out. And there's your fuse. A couple of plugins here. And where's the other thing? Comes with, oh, there it is. And also comes with a fuse tap here as well. And this is gonna plug into, um, I'll probably plug it in, in the same spot I plugged in the actual lift pump, which only comes on when the key is turned on to the accessory mode, or is on, of course. We'll keep running. So I'll probably save this and just tap the wire directly into that. But that is the kit. It should be pretty easy to install. There is a uh, Allen, I'll show you here in a second, the uh, Allen plug on the lift pump itself where the probe's gonna go is an H8, uh, size eight Allen or hexagonal. So I think this is all that we're gonna need for installation besides some zip ties and uh, some crimpers. Let's go ahead and check out the truck and see what we're working with. at the fuel pump or the lift pump here you can see it's pretty dirty under here this is the water separator this is the uh, fuel filter and we're gonna want to plug in our probe right here if you can see see that plug right there it's an allen bit I'm gonna try to set you up somewhere where you can see that Hopefully I'll have enough leverage here. There we go. Oh man, I hope that camera angle is right because I can't see shit. Okay. Break the bars, make the rope go around. Alright, get it out of the way. Fuel. It's pouring out of there. Yep. Okay. All right, just wanted to show you this real quick here. So here's the probe. There's that plug I just took out. We're gonna need to use one of the adapters from the kit. This probe is a little too long and we'll bottom out in the lift pump. So we'll use this. Put a little plumber tape on there, of course. We'll get that cinched down. And now, the probe uh, is not going to bottom out or get tangled up in anything in there. So I'm going to go ahead and cinch this down here. This is a 15 right here. That's a little bigger than a 15, but I'll get a, a wrench on that and we'll tighten this up real quick. Get that nice and in there. Now we're going to go ahead and tape this up as well. And they're all taped up. 
ready to probe. sticks out there, doesn't it? Parts done. Get a little dielectric grease on there. Get ready for uh, some wiring. Well, although I couldn't find the instructions online, just took the links to other products and coiled this mess, and it's pretty easy to figure out. Uh, that will plug into the probe. A little junction here. This with a little fuse here. We'll go and uh, connect directly to the battery. We got a positive and a negative. And then we got this solo wire here that will tap into our fuse box and we'll put it on an ignition uh, power so that it only feeds power when the ignition's on. And I think, yeah, that's all we gotta do really. So I'm gonna go ahead and start feeding this wire here. All right, this is just adding to my mess of wires, but let me show you where I'm at here. Okay, so those are ready for connections, ready to be plugged in there. I ran, I had to pull the loom off the wire so I can run that other one through the firewall. I got that popped out right here, and I'm going to plug it into this fuse tap, so I'll have to leave that one, or no, it's the one down below. I'm going to plug it into this fuse tap because that's what my pump is already plugged into. And then I ran the long wire to the probe straight down through in between the uh, you know, this mess of loom and the hydro boost straight down through. We went up and over and following the same wire route that I used for and it pops out right here and I got a little dielectric grease on there so that's ready to be plugged in really is a simple job so I'm gonna go ahead and get these lines prepped and plugged in Try to clean this up a little bit. I got way too many wires and stuff. Yeah, I'm not even sure what this is for. Came with the truck, but I should probably track that down at some point. Get rid of it. But anyways, I'm going to go ahead and plug these things in and show you what it looks like afterwards. Okay, got the preliminaries out of the way here, guys. I got us wired in here. I would have preferred to use some uh, shrink wrap, but looks like I don't have any that's okay I ordered a kit a couple days ago so I could redo all my wires and stuff and clean it up so that'll be part of the process but in the meantime I got her crimped and taped and that's well enough for my purposes and got her wired up in here into a fuse tap I just wanted to show you something real quick here so how do you know which one is an ignition power meaning when your key is on 
it receives power. Uh, I know because I already tested this out, but I just want to show you. You can get yourself one of these little tester lights, ground it out somewhere. And I'm going to use this one right here. As you can see, there's no light. So we'll take our key, put that on accessory mode. We'll go back here again, and bam. So that only gets power when you're in accessory mode or the truck is on. So that is the one we want. So that's in. Go ahead and button that back up. And you can route this however you want to. But I got mine running the full length with all the other looms. And then we got it plugged in right there. Probably gonna take this and get that a little more out of the way. I'll feng shui some things as I go, but it is on. Let's go ahead and Start this beast up. Check the leaks here. Well guys, I think that's going to about do it. That was a successful install. It was relatively easy and painless and I can confirm I put my hand up on that probe when I turned on the engine and it did heat up. It gets pretty freaking hot so that's awesome. Um, not much else to say. It didn't take that long to install. Pretty straightforward. Couple of wires and a probe and you're in business. I did take it out for a little rip ski. I uh, took it around the block a few times and out the road just to make sure that nothing blew up on me, burned out, or caught on fire, and everything's pretty good. So, only thing left to do now is to keep testing on it, see if I get a little fuel mileage increase. Uh, as far as like the power output, I, it did, did seem like the truck warmed up just slightly faster. And that might be a placebo effect, I'm not sure. And it did seem like I got a little bit more oomph in my uh, takeoffs. Uh, usually, this time of year when it's this cold, I barely see over 22 PSI on the turbo, but I got 27, so I don't know if that's just, I don't know. Um, don't know if I can attribute that to a uh, electric fuel heater and the new, uh, or the rebuilt fuel housing heater, or what could be my fuel additives could be, uh, who knows, who knows, but that old pig on the tow tune and we got 27 psi just getting up to speed so pretty happy about that uh everything else is running great so far and i guess i'm going to keep testing on this truck here for the next couple of weeks a few weeks or so and then i'll eventually get back to you and let you know how everything's working um next thing i gotta do is i gotta change out this conduit back here this outlet because my plug snapped on me I have my heaters both my heaters plugged into that so that's the next thing I got to change and uh, then stay tuned because I'll be coming out with another video that talks about the whole Alaskan winter cold start strategy and then I think during that video I'll probably talk about my experience so far with these two fuel heaters working in conjunction with each other and uh, let you know if I get any boost in my fuel economy or not. We'll see. All right, guys, I got to get back to it. So until next time.